Hello, um, everyone. My name is Jack Lin. Um, the photo you just seen is probably not, not, not a, probably the, um, the best place in the photo you'll see, because that's the only photo I got from, from the time I'm working for this company. And you know, the funny thing is, um, I'm actually hold, holding a, uh, a bag of Devondale milk powder uh, in China. I got a nickname back in, in China um, when I, was the, I spent about four years there with Alibaba, um, a milk king. So um, actually um, trading milk powders um, to, to, the, to the region. So, um, so it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, actually, my first time to present uh, in Melbourne in the, in the food sector um, and represent, by, uh, represent our company uh, here. Um, before joining Alibaba, I was in food industry for, for many years. I see many, many familiar faces here um, from the early uh, year of development of uh, export to China. And at the time, it's not cross-border at all. It's just export, general trade, import into China, and you're dealing with these offline and uh, online um, players in China. So uh, it's glad to be here again and showing everyone um, what's the best part of the e-commerce and also the chain of consumers and where at least we are heading in the future. We'll start with a little bit, <coughs> if you haven't seen this before, and that's some authentic photo uh, of what and how um, our um, Jack Ma uh, started business. Uh, for 1999, <clears throat> it's about 20 years ago. Um, in the next few days, we'll have our 20 years celebration in Hangzhou. So we are a very small company in terms of time, um, but we are heading to at least 102 uh, years um, companies. And we want to have these uh, wonderful journeys, not just with Chinese consumers, but with all the global uh, players, not just in Australia, but globally. Um, our mission is just to get everyone make business, do business easy, and not just in China, but also in global um, scale. Uh, if you have heard any uh, the new requirements uh, that happened in our, in, in our sh um, from, from our uh, recent reports, um, we have Lazadas in Indonesia, uh, in, in SEAs. Uh, we acquired a couple of other companies um, from other regions. So it's all about building these connections and, and trading uh, map together uh, to serve our uh, consumers and also to serve our uh, partners from any regions. We have the players here that are selling goods into China, but we also have the same connection we're selling those products to um, Indonesia, to Malaysia, uh, through both general trade and cross-border as well. So soon, um, Alibaba become, you could say, the largest retailer um, globally. We have a US dollar of 768 billion, uh, we call GMV. That's probably the word that most of you will hear uh, when you talk to Alibaba people, it's called GMV, Gen General uh, Merchandise, a uh, gross merchandise value. Uh, we have a brand selling across all our platforms. I'll introduce more about our ecosystem later. About 160,000 uh, more um, brands that are selling our platform. And the monthly active user, um, that's the, num uh, the, the, the indication for you to judge how active the platform is. It's about um, Six, uh, 670 million. And then, of course, um, what makes us become a large size retailer by today? I would like to share some numbers that go back to three years ago, um, not now. I pick up these numbers on purpose. I don't want to show the numbers just now. I want to give you uh, an overview of what happened and what we um, forecast before. Uh, that's not uh, well, our forecast today from all the data in the public. From three years ago, it's 2016. That was the year, just the year after I joined Alibaba. And China already become the world's largest retail market. Everyone knows that. The US dollar, uh, 4.8 trillion. And the online penetration from that time, we predict is about 33 by 2020. So that was next, that's not going to be next year. 
And for foreign uh, purchase of China uh, import goods, it's going to be 40% of a total uh, China online consumer bias. And I'll give you four key factors um, why Chinese consumers want to buy imported goods. The first one, this is just in general uh, across all the categories. The first one is uh, better quality and also the safety is still going to be a reason. Um, the booming of imported uh, products into China is on the, the early um, years of uh, the, the issue of uh, infant formula. So safety, quality, they are the first things that all Chinese consumers look into. Uh, of course, no similarity, um, like, or you're going to call no similar products, uh, local products. I want to take that uh, point as probably one of the most trendy points that you can build into a product. Uh, into the market. Uh, why? Because the new consumers from age 19 years old to 25, those people, not just quality and safety, they have a very strong um, self-awareness about what they want. Okay? So they want to be different. They want to be independent. It's almost like a chain you've been seeing 20 years ago, maybe 25, 30 years ago uh, from the Western countries. So, and then, of course, uh, for uh, specific origins, you want a coffee. I want to never buy the coffee from China. But I shouldn't say that, but um, that's obviously, you know, you want to buy the coffee from Italy. You want to buy um, meat from Australia. Uh, you want to buy seafood from Australia and any other countries that are famous and well known for seafoods. So, you want to spend more time and develop more products that have um, that strong origin um, feature to China's consumers. So a little bit online research through the market uh, in China at the moment is important for you uh, before you enter the market. So at that time we say tomorrow, but that's actually today. You know, we predict uh, three years later. So for now, for, from now, the 731 million internet users in China, that's equivalent to uh, a, a size of uh, a Europe. And it's also equivalent to a size of, uh, uh, not a size, actually twi uh, twice of a US. And it's, um, I would say calculation, that's all right. Um, it's about 20 times, is it? More than 20 times Australian um, population. So that's the scale you are going to face in the market. And in terms of middle class, that's a very popular word. Uh, if you go online and search middle class for China or Chinese middle class, it's actually you will have different uh, definition of China middle class. We share some um, similarity of a general definition of middle class globally, but we do have some particular points that's really, really good reports online what is China, uh, the real China uh, middle class uh, for you to understand what kind of consumer you are facing now and also uh, in the future. So more than 300 uh, million middle class that's actually uh, adding a size of, you can see from, um, uh, adding a size of uh, Germany. Um, and that's how the size of quality consumers uh, you will have in their market. Uh, getting a little bit more into the import market as well. So you ever heard about the, the, um, the cross-border business? The cross-border business is actually helping a lot of uh, Australian business uh, or you want to say uh, the Kiwi business here, we got ANZ region, right? Um, to have the strong growth uh, for the past five years. By 2000 and, um, <coughs> excuse me, by 2020, um, you have online shoppers um, growth from 20% to 50.7%. And that was just the cost of 2014. That's only five, six years of time, you have almost double growth, uh, you have double growth um, online shoppers in China. And from population penetration, 6.5% and to 25%, that's almost um, six times of growth of the uh, population. So again, quality consumers, then we go down these slides, so you'll see it's not just the quality, but also um, the penetration of the population and penetration of online consumers to buy import goods. And then with that scale, um, I'll give you a quick uh, kind of recap of how we build up the entire ecosystem. Um, you have digital media uh, entertainments on the left side, that's where 
we, you know, doing advertisement, we're doing marketing, but also collecting data uh, from the consumers uh, to empower our merchants to better execute their marketing plan. You have middle, in the middle, you have a core, eco, a core commons, um, there's all the retail uh, platforms, wholesale platforms, uh, regional platforms uh, for, uh, for, for, for selling the product. And for local service as well, as well and you'll see that as part of a data um, management. So you're collecting all the data from uh, like our um, um, new retail uh, build up, uh, Herma or Fresh Hip Hop, so you want to call it, uh, from our map service, uh, and to go back to the system to let our merchants know what kind of consumers you are going to face and how you're going to market your products um, into, uh, into our ecosystem. Of course, the fundamentals. Um, you have payment, financial service, you have logistics, you have a marketing service, um, that's your order, your brand asset, will come into that part. And AliCrowd is a crowd service that store, manage, uh, and elaborates all these data to help our merchants' um, business, not just in China, but globally. So our target has become the largest, uh, the, no, the fifth largest uh, economy um, by 2036. Remember, it's not a company, it's all about economy. We're not building a, just an entity, but we're building an ecosystem that people can join, can do business, um, but also uh, to grow their business through this ecosystem. We go back to our region. Um, Australians have a really, really strong positioning in the market. Uh, last year, uh, for double 11, we were going to show some figures from, uh, from last year, double 11, we, we end up as a, a third ranking um, from, from selling um, the products into China. Um, and the majority, what we're selling, you can see the food, groceries, beauty, personal care, mom, baby. So any brands that you heard like going to China, it should fall into those categories. Or any brands you want to go to China, that should fall majority into those categories. But remember the food, grocery, that including health supplements. So that's a bit different differentiation about general grocery and health supplements. The stronger one would be the health supplements because per value and also uh, the brand size uh, is much uh, advanced than general food business in the China. But of course, you've got general trade in China, uh, you know, like beef, um, uh, you know, meats, and other products uh, that into China, and that's uh, calculated differently. Uh, also, I want to put one more really important point um, about the tourism. So how the tourism and local community engagement help with the awareness and uh, the push of Australian brands and Australian um, uh, the future of Australian products is very important. So when you have a marketing plan or when you have a selling plans, uh, always remember engage local um, community and also uh, engage all these tourism um, community as well to help your products have a, a landing pad locally uh, to talk to uh, the, all, those, uh, all those opinion leaders that, you know, all these tourists coming here, they're going to bring home all the messages about what's actually popular in Australia. And that's about more than 2,000 Australian brands uh, on our platforms. Again, um, if you try to categorize all these brands, you should fall into uh, those category I mentioned above. Okay. So that was last year, W11. Uh, as I say, Australian rank is actually number three. It's number number four. I always get uh, get people to revise on that point. Say it's number three, not number four. <laughs> we always compete with uh, Korea, South Korea. Um, so last year, the entire Timor Double Eleven, uh, which is going to happening very soon again, two year, uh, two months later, uh, we have about thirty point eight billion US dollar of GMV, and it's about twenty seven percent of YOY, uh, so year-on-year -year growth uh, from 2017. So also, uh, we have about 180 brands participate in um, this event. And um, also, most importantly, that's about 40% of all these consumers actually purchase an item of imported goods. So that gives you the size and also the quality of consumers again. 
All right, just try to list up a brands that get you to understand, you know, um, what's the best and what's happening in the market. So Swiss, healthy supplements, Devondale, so that's, you know, how I got the name from, so the milking. <laughs> um, and also Bio Island, there was a baby formula, uh, sorry, baby uh, nutrition. And have Blackmores, again, health supplements, healthy care. Uh, Sister Penetration uh, is the uh, personal care brand. Uh, you have a GNM, Freedom Foods, the Arnold's Farm, Santa Bellamy's Organics, Formulas again, uh, and then also New Lex, uh, so it's uh, healthy supplements. So, and that's all the um, categories that you can see. Okay, number one, health supplements, still very strong. Edel meal powder, that's because um, Maxigen, that's from one of Bio Island's brands, and also um, Devondale. And also infant formula, total nutrition. I'm not gonna get into detail what's like kind of gonna be a trend for the uh, next couple of years, but I'll give you uh, a couple examples that what's happening this year. So this year, very strong growth in baby nutrition. So when I say baby nutrition, it's not formula, but general nutrition, like supplements that baby, baby can take. The products, we go back to the very early point. Uh, again, something different, something that you cannot compare in that market. So you have a really less choice at the moment in China for the, the, the new parents to select and to um, try to um, help their baby uh, you know, grow, uh, which is the baby nutrition. And there's not many brands in the market. So that's very strong growth this year. Uh, also baby care. Uh, baby care is strong growth in that market. So premium baby care. If you've got a reason for a premium and you, should, you, you are sure you can market it out, uh, that's a chance for you in the market. So, and we'll go to the next one. Well, all right. So if you're asking about how I'm you know, going to do in China, I'll give you a quick wrap up of all this you can assess. Again, this kind of narrowed down from um, what I have a present about our ecosystem. So on the left side, you have a, a number of specialty store, large retails, Woolworths, uh, Chemist Warehouse, uh, our Shrimp Post, and also um, from our Jessica, uh, Ross, Jessica suitcase stores already opening their stores and operate on the store for many years. Um, and that's what, where you should talk to them and, and have your product maybe uh, work with them in their market to have a, a trial to start with. And of course, if you go back to a bigger scale, um, you can go to our B2D marketplace, which is wholesales, uh, the 1688.com, um, and then you go to uh, the Fresh site, the uh, team of Fresh. That's all store, we call it platform model, so you actually, uh, actually you become your own retailer. You open a store in China, uh, which obviously requires more investment, more efforts, uh, and more uh, experience to set up the business. And the right hand side, the cross border model, again, um, you know, probably not, this is not really fit into the Fresh category, but for majority of category, um, the, Fred, uh, the Timor Global and also um, the Taobao Global is the, the place you can, you're kind of like taking a stage a step by step into the market. From the early stage to development listing on Taobao Global, find your Taobao Global buyer, uh, start getting some traction for your products and brand, and then you have your uh, own Timor Global stores um, in the market to start selling your brand. So that's a bit red. Um, a further information about the best way uh, to China. We have Alibaba e-commerce expo. That's the last one is just hosted um, in Sydney last week. We have a huge success for this local event. It's a place for you to um, not just see your consumers, uh, local traders, but also for your um, brand to have exposures um, to all uh, our, uh, Chinese uh, to our Chinese consumers through live streams. Um, we, we just achieved um, very successful result from this year's live streams. Uh, we invite one of the uh, top, top three KOLs in China to do live streams. And I think the top selling brand is the Swiss uh, into the new products. Um, so you might say, okay, they ha already have attraction in China. Yes, you're right. But what we just said, what I just said is the, the, the skills we're selling to achieve million dollars of sales 
uh, for that event is actually their new skills. So you see the market difference and the, and the, and the techniques you're using for the market is actually different, uh, different from what you have experienced before. So not just platform model, but you need to acquire all these uh, tools and, and the capability you can have from the market to promote, to, um, to, to uh, introduce your brand. Then after e-commerce expo, again, you go, go to Taobao Global, you can start list your products. And then, as I say, then you go to Timo Global also, or, or you go to Timo.com. I put a circle here, because it's not necessary for you to go to Timo Global first, and then Timo.com. It could be the other way around. Uh, or you can do parallelly. So it really depends on what kind of product you're selling and uh, also uh, what kind of consumer you focus on. We have three edge consumers from Timo Global, high education, high consumption, and high uh, incomes. Um, so it's more targeting to the imp what we call imported group. Uh, the Timo.com is more mass market, but also it's general traded product. So you need to be, you need to be able to general trade a product in China, um, have a local business entity or local partner to work with, um, and also have a local warehouse to operate your uh, delivery um, to consumers. Okay, so next era, what we're gonna do, the new retail. Um, again, this is a not, not a very difficult concept. Uh, it's for the company, like us, to have that scale, scale of models um, and business, to be able to collect all the data from consumers, uh, to analyze their, their behaviors, um, and then put into our product merchandising, to orders, to payments, and even to loyal pro, uh, royalty programs. So to understand what really what they need, uh, in some products, service, and also to improve from there. Um, the most famous, and everyone should know this if you ever uh, visit China for, for part two to three years, is our fresh hip hop or Herma business in the country. I'll give you a more detail about this. So um, the Herma business, we have about, I think the, the store number just grow um, every, every month. So I can't remember what exactly the numbers by today but it's probably about 150 from the last time I heard. Um, and then it cover, it's a, basically it's a fresh store, it's using fresh as an anchor um, to encourage consumers to come, into, um, to come into the store. It's a combination of modern supermarket, community supermarket, and also a way market type of a business that you have a fish tank in the store and you can pick up your, your, one of your lobster, um, Australian one or uh, Boston one that Chinese people thought they are the same, but it's not, right? <laughs> um, and um, I pick up one of that, and you can cook from the store. So we have a, a dining service there, and at the end of the, the queue, you pick up from there, and you can have, a, have your, your lobster fresh cooked, like fresh kill, gutted, and cook in that store. So it's not just a place for shopping, it's a place for uh, experiencing the, the product, but in this case, fresh, of course. Um, it's a place for family to getting Together, you, when you go to the home store, um, you hardly see anyone like just one or two people walk in the store and, and do some daily shopping. It's all about family getting together and experience some some um, good products, quality products, and new products. And the the, the home stores also uh, work from the app as well. So actually, you need to use the app to check out. So from the app, uh, you check out and it's linked to AliPay, which is our, our payment system. So you're collecting again all this information. Uh, from consumers, how much they buy, uh, how many times they buy a week, and what kind of stuff they buy, right? And then uh, use the app, you store all your uh, purchasing, so when you get home, next time, you think about buying two lobster, one abalone, and one bottle of painful wines. Again, what you do is just select the previous order and click. So no more need to go to the store. In two 30, in, within 30 minutes, guaranteed, we deliver to your, um, to your door. So that's why I call it it's a community supermarket. It's not large scale supermarket gonna cover everything. Um, so it's quite a pity when I, when I live in Hangzhou, uh, which is our headquarter, uh, there's only areas that you can go to have a home art store. And that's why we call it uh, a home art building or home art district. So when you buy one of the apartments, uh, you ask like, is that a home art building? So that will probably value up a little bit, <laughs> okay? Uh, so it's just kind of phenomenal 
uh, business case that we build up in that country that people start uh, not build the, the build in their consumption to their daily life. And also we have a, a, our daily fresh that's guaranteed a one day turnaround. So, um, for example, the milk, anchor, anchor milk from, from Fonterra. Um, and they have their, their own local farms in China. They build up their, their um, daily fresh with Herma. And when you finish that product, uh, the, the, they will only have a one day, not one day shelf life, but after day, so we have actually putting Monday milk, Tuesday milk, and Wednesday milk, when you finish up, we clear out from the shelf and we reuse that from our dining um, areas to, to bake uh, bread to, for, other, for other uses. So try to minimize the waste as well. Um, but that gives consumers the experience and guarantee of how fresh Herma is. And that, go back to that, that's just a general setup. So the dry goods section is not huge. Again, it's not a, a, a large size or a complete size of a supermarket, but we do um, grow quite a, uh, we did grow quite quite a big uh, size of a shelf life for past uh, dry goods shelf life uh, shelf, shelf space for the past 12 months but the majority uh, still the anchor uh, category still the the fresh area so after collecting the collecting this big data and analyze this data what happened is we're using all these consumer big data to improve delivery to improve the marketing um, to also improve uh, what we should, uh, what we should uh, as a buyer, what we should buy for, for next month, how much we should buy, and also the shelf, uh, shelf space, the shelf efficiency. So anything you can think about to improve the business offline and also online coming from those um, data we collect um, from consumers and be able to deliver uh, a better business plan. Uh, from those data. The national wide, um, that covers probably more than 12 cities, I think 12 regions, you want to call it, in China. But it's, again, it's still, it's just still going, uh, going quite a lot. But we also have a district, so DC district warehouse uh, in China. They're not just serving the store, but they actually uh, deliver products direct from that district, DC to consumers' uh, gate doors. That means the product, you're probably not going to see it from the store, but you can see from the app. You can buy from the app and deliver to consumers. So uh, that's a bit, um, I would say, tricky part. You probably won't hear about that in China when you talk to Herma people. But that's kind of like small category. But we try to become uh, more agile uh, in business to, to serve uh, our consumers. So yes, that's about it. And um, that's. I think it's a great, a great summary for you to understand what Alibaba is doing and what we're heading, and also uh, how our retail uh, is, uh, looks like in the market. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. That's great. What, um, what amazing numbers they really are. Not going to sit there. Uh, would you, if you'd like to stand just here. Yeah, sure. Now, we've had a question come through on the app, the Global Table app, which is fantastic. Thank you for using that. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question from the floor. Really good one, actually. What do you think will be the next big technology change to affect e-commerce in China? Uh, well, well big, big data was the one, right? So we still discover from the big data. So the data, the use of the data for sure. And it's still in the very early stage for everyone around the world. Um, so definitely big data. Mm -hmm. And of course, AI. So I'm going to put up the Ali crowds. Um, so that's a, a building next to our Alibaba headquarter. Uh, I can't remember it's really what it's called in English, but in Chinese it's called Qingchengli, OK? It's a building you walk in. Uh, Andrew, have you seen that? No, probably. It's a building walking. You have big screens on the top. Um, when was it? It's just in the middle of that building, so it's a hang up there. And it shows the heat map of the, building, of the shopping malls and what's the, the top restaurants in that building, the top, the top life that people actually attending that restaurant. And it recognizes how many females, males in that building because they have official recognition and tell you how many car uh, ports actually left in that building for you to park. So, well, next, probably AI. Yeah, I'm not going to the biggest, but 
AI, big data. I think that's good combinations um, to help retail uh, or retailer in China. Yeah. Okay, that's fascinating. Slightly scary, but it wouldn't be scary to my children, I'm sure. What's privacy? Um, just on the big data thing, are you also finding that the technology is allowing you to process that data faster as well? If you have heat maps, then I'm guessing yes. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then, does that mean you're moving products faster or differently? Uh, by using... The, the data that you're getting in... For sure. Yeah. Can yeah. you explain that a little bit about how much uh, that's driving the business? Okay, so just trying to think about one example. Um, so we, if you ever operate in our, on, on our platforms, you might hear about the World Consumer Group, but it's, it's not exactly a consumer group like we, we're dealing with um, here. It's about the consumer group that with the age uh, difference, um, consumption difference, you know, purse, per head, uh, purchasing values. So we collect all of this to come up with a, a result. What that product should sell to what kind of consumer group, how often and how much stock I sh actually put into my uh, warehouse. And they will lead back to your, uh, go back to your lead time, to go back to uh, preparation of your, your materials, and they could even go back to your cash flow and everything else. So we've seen very good um, result coming up from not just imported goods, but actually working from, from a lot of uh, a local, so in China, domestic dairy companies that actually affect a lot into their uh, milk supply chains, that everything become digitalized to, um, to, to, to the consumers. Back to yeah. the, yeah. And so you share that data with the... the once the, once the, the merchant reaching to a certain stage, yes. Yeah. It depends how close um, uh, the system working together mm -hmm. and also the size of business as well. So we're not talking that someone's only started business for 500k <laughs> sales and then we're talking about huge big data because you still have not enough brand assets and data in the market. Mm. Okay. Any questions from the floor at this point? No? Well, I have plenty. So one of the comments that you made which I'd like to you to talk a little bit about, a bit about more is the consumer, generally aged 18 to 25, very self-aware. 18, 18 yeah. yes, 18 to 25, very self-aware, very aware of what they're purchasing, uh, the perception that is of them when they buy something, what that says about them, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering. I know that friends share a lot of information about a product, and that has some traction, but. In terms of the aspiration, the, the, th the kind of person that they want to be, what, do you, what trends are you seeing in that age group? What kind of person from 18 to 25? Yeah. But being different, is, is that kind of personality? Yes, yeah. being different. Um, having something, so being different, think differently. Being able to um, have something quicker than other people. Than their peers. Than their peers. Wow. Not missing the chain. I'm not going to you know, tell me exactly what that kind of person looks like as from that age, but I think that's the age. Or being, I even want to talk about, it's more about product and category. Right. Yes, the person that, you know, this age, when they like sports, um, of course, music, um, actually become more self uh, have more self-awareness about what I eat. They want to become more healthy. So more like a, about 30 years, uh, 20 years ago, more about your parents would think, you know, having better nutrition is actually happened to this consumer group. That's huge different from before. Because when I was 19, I'd eat everything, you know. <laughs> I can eat chips like all day. <laughs> and, um, but for them, it's, it started changing. Like people actually care about their uh, young people, like really young people, 19, college girls, really care about their, their appearance, uh, really care about their inner health. That's, I think that would be a, quite a different point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We, we ha yes, thank you. There's a question here. If you could just, sorry, if you could just perhaps give your name and where you're from, just so we get an idea. Thank you. My name is Deep from Silicon Harvest. Thank you, Jackie, for your presentation. I have a question um, 
depends, it depends on how much you can share about your strategy and execution. But we all know that China is a very big city with a high level of complexity. Mm -hmm. So as, um, as a, a plat an online platform, mm -hmm. Alibaba, to what extent do you um, tailor or customize your strategy and execution based on different regions of country? Good question. Thank you. In what extent are we going to tell us? Yeah. Uh, I have to say this is a very broad, broad question, not broad question, it's a very broad question. Um, I'm probably not sitting or standing at the best position to answer that question, but going global is one of our key strategy. I believe going global, um, we will try to adapt the country and region as much as we can um, to find the best opportunity for the market. I think that's probably the point I can share, but definitely going global and go Global. That's what we call internally. Uh, we have global buy, global, global sell, global entertainment, global delivery, and global pay. That's five um, global we're sharing, um, and that's the, the service or capability we offer into that market as well. Yeah. Mm, yes, down the front. Thank you. Just one moment. We'll get a microphone to you. Yes. Thank you. My name is. You're fine. Uh, Didier Brasser from uh, Milkways. I understand that. Uh, Alibaba is also going very much into sourcing yes. from farm to the market. Uh, yeah. Could you explain a little bit about that problem? Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, s again, Alibaba is a platform. So, we are into sourcing, but actually it's the players on a platform that are into sourcing. So, again, we'll go back to the early s the slides about uh, the wholesale market. It's all about w the, the people, uh, the merchants, on the buyer on 16aa.com, the original B2B platform, um, to try to source the best materials or, or best programs they can build into supply chain, into the market. So yes, technically we, we're sourcing, um, but it's more about the merchants or buyers on our platform is sourcing products. So if you do have a plans to supply into the market, uh, we offer a few different uh, platforms for you to do it, but if you're trying to say, if you if you try to say um, purchasing or uh, build our supply chains into China uh, on behalf of Alibaba, so we actually the one. It's still uh, a small portion of our business. Uh, we do we did it a little bit, not in every category, but still a small portion of a business. Reason of that is we are, we are um, we are platform. We're not going to cutting off all the value chains. So the nature of our business is a platform business. And it's an ecosystem that everyone doing their business on that platform. Yes. Hmm. OK. Uh, yes, question there. Thank you. Hi, Jackie. My name is Ben from True Protein. Uh, just on the younger consumers, do you know if they're more interested on in, I suppose, inner and general health, or are they becoming more conscious of uh, their actual body image as well? I think both. Both. Yeah, it's a, you need to offer a full package. But obviously, you can't design a product like do everything. But you see, um, um, gym, business, uh, different workout business in China going, you know, you, you have, um, you go in China, you have, it, it, especially in tier one, tier city, you can co see CrossFit everywhere. You can see like small CrossFit studios. We have about three CrossFit studios around our campus. So, reason why, because we have uh, about 25,000. Young people, our average, probably average age for our company is about 27, 28. Um, and then they need to work out, right? So most of them probably not married yet. So yes, they need to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that's my point. Um, from, from outside, yes, look more healthy, uh, look younger. Uh, but also from inside, taking care of yourself and your life better. Yes. Both. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions from the floor? Yes, the, to the lady in the middle. Yeah. Hi, Jackie. My name is Colleen. I'm from for the United. I'm just uh, wondering for the big data, um, if we have a Timor, uh, Timor Global shop with uh, Alibaba, are, are we able to access all the uh, information of our customers who is buying from, from the shop or platform? Or, um, alternatively, uh, it's not, uh, so in, from the marketing perspective, um, are we able to target um, the customers that we want to target? So, so when they open up the app or anything, the, uh, the shop comes yep. first to them. Yep, yep, yep. 
Um, ans well, I'm going to answer you qu your question in two parts. Firstly, yes, we have the data, but go back to your point. Privacy is very important. So we want to just give you, OK, Mr. Lin buying uh, two pack of cigarettes, but the wife doesn't want you know, him to s smoke anymore. So it's a privacy. So we won't give you law data for sure, like no law data for any consumers. But we'll give you what we call uh, an indication. I su assume you have a store on Timor, Timor Global. Um, you have those indications that were produced from the law data uh, to give you the capability to analyze your competitors, um, to analyze consumers. But of course, that we have a charge on that as well. Depends how big your size is, your business, and you can actually have those data to improve your business. And the second part is, um, yes, you can, targeting your, uh, your, your consumers. But again, it's not the law data. So it's a capability you need to have in the market to work with your, uh, this is probably a little bit more details already, um, your TP, so your trade partner or t your operation partner uh, on Timo, Timo Corobo to use those data and to use our tool to circle, we call it circle of consumer groups and you have a commercial rates on that. So better your practice in the market, better data you have, that means you need to have better sales, the large scale, so you have more data for consumers. Then next time, you should have, or you might have a better result from the circle of consumers you select to target targeting market. And also, uh, we call thousand page, thousand people, thousand page, uh, that's one of front page. So every consumers, almost every consumers in China will see different front page <coughs> Excuse me, from Taobao or the Timo app. Almost everyone. Um, if you buy food, if you buy a baby product, more. And most of your page will actually popping up baby products and food products. If you buy clothing, so again, go back to 19 or 25 young girls, um, you buy definitely buy grow, uh, your, your clothing and other accessories, a bit more. You won't see any food uh, unless you buy coffee and then you see coffee. So, like my page, I was a global buyer for food uh, in Alibaba. Um, and my page is always Devon Dale. <laughs> so, on the top there, so better you sell, and the consumer always look into it, they will definitely see the product. They will see the product, yes. We have time for one more question, if anyone has one. Uh, well, I might get to ask the last question then, sure. Jackie, if that's okay. In the earlier panel on branding, building a brand in China, it was mentioned that the market is changing basically monthly. You need to be aware of monthly trends rather than a yearly trend, for instance. Would you agree with that? Online, uh, depending on how much you want to get into your business. If you only do something different, so when I say different, it's not just opportunity. It's all about compete. We have a weekly meeting every week. So I would say weekly. <laughs> so I would need to know every Monday what's happening, what happened last Friday or last week. So I can tailor my program operation from Monday to Friday. I will check my stock. I understand what kind of buying difference have been changed for the past seven days. Uh, per value, uh, per, sorry, per unit, uh, per consumer purchase value, they might decrease for 20%, 30%. So, well, that means I run more promotions. Should I run as much more promotion as this? Probably not, because I want to bring that number up. But once you bring that number up, you have a higher value, uh, lower value, uh, total value of sales because you have less transition, right? So you need to find out what is the best balance of promotions? Let's just say this example, the promotions. And that could be uh, different by weeks. So by every week. So it's not just months. So if you want to get down, really get down to the detail of that business, um, uh, that, to that question, I think that weekly is probably the best answer. But you ob obviously, you can look into like monthly plan, annual plans, uh, quarterly plans to just have a general um, targeting to your business running China. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for answering that. And could you please join me in thanking Jackie Lin from Alibaba. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.